So Father, we thank you. For you will live and you will move. And you will have a baby. Lord, you are the ageless God. The ancient of days. The bright morning star. The one that opens a door which no man can shut. The one that shuts which no man can open. The one that brings to life that which has died. The one that has the power of resurrection. The one who himself is resurrection. We thank you, God, for this new month. We thank you for the new beginning. We thank you, Lord, for another chance. We thank you, God, the faithful God, the reliable God, indispensable God, Lord, indeniable God. We thank you, irreplaceable God. Lord, we thank you, O God. Without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. Lord, we worship you. We just thank you for your faithfulness. We just thank you because you are constant. Even when we fail, God does not fail. Because love cannot fail. Lord, we thank you. There are many that look up unto you. They are changed. Glory to glory. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Lord, change us with God. Amen. Make us better. Amen. Better woman, better man. Amen. Make us better boy, better girl. Amen. Amen. Lord, make us better pastors. Amen. We worship you. Amen. Amen. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Get to the wise. Feel us, so God. Amen. Your power. Amen. There's something that you want to do for us. There's something that you need to do for us. You have to do it to us. Amen. This is a new month, oh God. Yes. Last month has gone. With his shame, with his regrets, with his defeats. But this month is fresh. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Amen. So say, I will do a new thing. Yes. Amen. And it shall spring forth. Yes. And you not know it. Yes. Say, forget the things of the past. Oh, yeah. Do not consider them. Because they are gone. And I will do a new thing. Lord, we thank you. God, do a new thing. Amen. Do a new thing for us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's clap this up. Come on, let's clap by your side. Hallelujah. Welcome them by your side. And the Lord will meet them at the point of their needs. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Nice to see you. Don't consider your shape, 
Don't consider the travel. Don't consider the difficulties. Don't for consider the failures. This is God talking. Don't consider the regrets, the let down. Verse 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. When you don't consider the past, when you don't tie yourself down to the past, then you will give God the privilege to do a new thing. God will give you a fresh start. Amen. I said God will give you a fresh start. Amen. Behold, I will do a new thing. What is another name for new? New, fresh. Isn't it? What other name do you have for new? I will do a new thing. It shall be new for you. Amen. Now it shall spring forth. Just look at those things that are gone. Look for what God says he will do. God is talking here. I will do a new thing. Behold, shall you not know it? When it comes, everyone will know. Amen. In fact, if you refuse to testify about it, that thing will testify of itself. It says, it shall spring forth. When it spring forth, that means the word spring means as a force. It's like somebody that is pregnant and doesn't want it to know. After a while, will it not spring forth? You will put on all the. What do they put on? They want to cover it. Maternity. You want to Not even the maternity. You want the fashion. Flashing one. Legging. Ah, she said leggings. <laughs> God help me to put the leggings on. In fact, after a while, and after a while, that legging will not be able to help you. Amen? Because there's a force of blessing. Said, it shall spring forth. Your own blessing will spring forth. Amen. When a blessing springs forth, that is, it's coming with a force. Even the devil cannot stop it. Shall you not know it? And he says, I will even make a road in the wilderness. I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What you have not seen before, I will do it. Amen. You've not seen the road in the wilderness, I will give you a highway in the wilderness. Amen. You have not seen rivers in the desert places, I will bring forth a spring of water. Our God is a God of all possibility. Amen. Please don't undermine God. When you undermine God, you are limiting His integrity. He's not, he's not going to do it with the available resources. He's going to do it with the unavailable resources. Say, so dig for yourself trenches. Dig for yourself trenches. And guess what? There will not be any rain. There will not be any wind. Yet, it shall be filled with water. Amen. Oh, somebody did not get me. I said, Amen. it shall be filled with water. Amen. The blessing of God shall wet you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the church of the rock. By its light, we receive light. Amen. If this place will teach you the word of God, the indispensable word of God, the irreplaceable word of God, incompatible word of God, the word of God that does not fail and never fail. So he that finds it, find what? Life. And receive health to his body. And you find the word of God. People that find the word of God, they hold on to it. They see that man that sold everything to buy that treasure land. He sold everything to buy the treasure land because in that treasure land, land that is mine of gold. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Put your hands together for Sister Mary. And she blesses us.
First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. says in everything in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for someone for someone for me. he says it's personalized say in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is in everything? What is in everything? That is, in every situation you find yourself, good or bad. Bad or good. Or not so good. Even when you are alone and lonely. Even when you have suffered rejection and disappointment. Say, give thanks. So it's not only when things are jolly well that we give thanks. It takes a man of faith or a woman of faith to still give thanks, to still praise God, even when things are not going on smoothly. This is the month of thanksgiving. When situations on the ground are not so good, says give thanks. Can you say give thanks? Give thanks. When situations are not good, give when situations are bad, give thanks. When you are sick, give thanks. When you are well, give thanks. When you have money, give thanks. And you have no money, give thanks. When things are getting too, too delayed, give thanks. When they come eventually, give thanks. And if they don't come at all, give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything give thanks. But why? It says you must give thanks because it is the will of God for you. So this is the will of God for you to give thanks. Doesn't God know my situation? He knows. But I want to do the will of God. And what is it? Give thanks. A man's will is his purpose. A man's will is his purpose. A man's will to go. A man's will to come. So the will power belongs to that man. You will to come to church. You will not to come to church. You will to say sorry. You will not to say sorry. You will to move forward. You will not to move forward. A man's will is his own purpose. And when a man uses his own will properly, things go well. May things go well for you. Amen. The prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. In Luke chapter 15, the Bible says, But when he came to himself, verse 17, I believe, when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's iron servants have bread enough and to spare? You have your own Bible as well. <coughs> How many of my father's servants had bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. That is, I have a choice. I am suffering here, but at home things are much better. And look at verse uh, 18. I will arise and go to my father. How could I be suffering here? There is something amiss. How could I be suffering in another kingdom? There is something amiss. How could I be suffering in my house? There is something amiss. I will arise. A man's will is his own purpose. I will arise. 
I will arise and go to my father. Use your will power in the right direction. Your will power can be so constructive. Don't let us always use the will power. I sometimes use the will power for destructive things. I will arise and go to my father. And in verse 19, he will say to the father, No, father, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm not worthy to be called your child. Just make me one of your hired servants. All along, does this man, did he have any will? This younger man of these two, of these children, of this father, did he have any will at all? All along, did he use his will properly? No. All along, his will power was used for his own selfish gains. All along, because he woke up one day and told his father, Father, I want my own lot out of your inheritance. I don't know that man or that woman that will share his inheritance when he is still alive or she is still alive. I thought it's only when they are gone that they now share it and distribute it. But this man was so selfish that he will all the will of the father to himself. Or he will some of the father's will to himself. You can see how he used his willpower. But that's one side. And then when he has wasted everything on prodigality, he came to himself in that verse 17 and said, why should I bother myself here? And now he wants to refocus his willpower. He said, I will arise and I will go. And then verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. So all along, his willpower has been for his own selfish gain. Until now, when he refocused his willpower to others, he knows that he was not the only one in the family. He knows that whatever effect, whatever thing that he does, has a way to affect every member of that family. All along, he's been selfish, but now he wants to go back home. He wants to refocus his willpower. He wants to answer the needs of other people. He wants to be there for other people. Let's quickly talk and consider others. Consider others. God has given us the way to get out of trouble. God has given everyone the way to make better your life and it's through your willpower to redirect your willpower to meet other people that are in need. You try and begin to think less of yourself and think more of others, you will see it's going to make your life better. God says, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. If I think less of myself and think more of others, then I'll be able to give thanks out of my miserable condition. But if I think more of myself, that is when I will say what is there to give thanks about and what is happening to me. Consider others. Say, so this is the will of God for you. Let's be a little bit of an extrovert. Let's be a little bit of giving out to people. Consider them so that you can make your life better. And in that verse 12, and the youngest said to his father, Father, give me the portions of goods that falls to me. And the father divided his own inheritance and gave it to the child. The problem began when this younger son was selfish, was considering only himself. 
Only I, myself, and me. Life will become better. Christianity will become more enjoyable. Christianity will become more progressive when we consider others. Problem of life begins and the whole lot of it lies on selfish desires. Consider others. In Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, of verses 4 to 7, the story of Cain and Abel. They were brothers. But let's see what selfishness did to divide them. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Verse 5. For he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell. They become sober. They become resentful. They become sad. Why did they become sad? Because he noticed that God did not respect his offering. Verse 6. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? When you are more of self, when you are concerned about yourself and not others, you find out that you become more angry when things are not going on with you. He says, God told us, Cain, why are you angry? A man that is living for himself, when you are angry, no one will be there to comfort you. And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, if you have used your will, power, constructively, will you not be accepted? If you have channeled your will, power, positively, in the right direction, not thinking more of yourself, but thinking less of yourself, Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, if you have been thinking more of yourself and you have been using your willpower this honestly, he says, sin lies at the door. And his desire is for you. His desire is for you. Or you should rule over it. He says you should overcome selfishness. Amen. Say you should overcome it. Don't let selfishness rule you. Cain was not happy because God made him to understand that God was not pleased with him. May God be pleased with you. Cain became angry, <coughs> bitter, <coughs> and battered because God rejected him. So, what next did Cain do? He killed his brother out of jealousy. And God was asking him, Cain, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Can you imagine what could have happened if Cain redirected his willpower from himself to his brother. Can you imagine when we redirect our feelings the way I should have felt when things are not going well? If I redirect it to meeting somebody's need, my life would have been made better. And God asked him, why are you angry? 
So sadness, therefore, can be as a result of the wrong use of your willpower. Sadness can be as a result of the abuse of your will. So if sadness has a cause, what about happiness? Happiness also has a cause. So I can choose to make myself happy by redirecting my will to others, by considering others. You know, some people delight in helping people. They derive in it. They derive joy in helping people. And on the other side, we have people that derive joy in harming people. They are called sadists. So, can you see the right use of willpower and the wrong use of willpower? But I'm pleading with you as Christians. I'm pleading with you because you have the Spirit of God in you. As members of the body of Christ, as citizens of the kingdom of God, consider others. So if you do well, will you not be accepted? So God accepts people that do well. God accepts people that consider others. God accepts people that are not selfish. Think less of yourself that you'll be accepted to God. When you consider others more than yourself, God will accept you. He said, love is putting others before ourselves. And in that verse 9, when God asked him, where is Abel, your brother? Say, am I my brother's keeper? As believers, as Christians, if you don't see someone for one week, few days, we have to look, go after them. That is the only proof that we have faith in God. That means that we are considering others. Do you know that it's what you do for others that God will make others to do for you? Whatever you sow, you reap. I'm asking you and imploring you as followers of Christ, consider others. The level of God in you is a measure of how much you reach out to people. You cannot be a believer of God when you are not considering others. For God so loved the world that he gave. Is only the glory soul. You see? God knows that we needed Jesus more than God needed Jesus. And so God gave Jesus to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 23. Verse 15 to 17. And David said with longing, talking about David, the man of God, all oh, that someone will give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Verse 16. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines. They drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate. They went into the enemy's camp because that was where the only well was to get water for David, their master. And they brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, 
Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he will not drink it. To the extent you can risk your life for others is the measure of God that is in you. There is no faith without works. To the extent you can reach out to others is the measure of God in you. The true meaning of grace for every letter, G-R-A-C-E, God reaches to us at Christ's expense. If God had not reached out to you, you would not be here today. That is why you too need to reach out to others so that they too can be here. God has saved you <coughs> to save others. God has saved you to save others. Turn to somebody and say, consider others. <laughs> David was so overwhelmed by the hazard that he put the lives of these three men into. They could have been killed, you know. They could have been slaughtered just like that, just because they want to get a cup of water for their folks. They risk their lives. That is what the point here. They risk their life. You won't say because it is cold. I don't want to see that sister. Or I don't want to go and visit that brother. It is only God that can put it in you to visit somebody. Devil doesn't care. We are living in a very cold country, selfish country, independent country. The danger of independence is that we are so independent that it does not depend on others. Had a uh, uh, hypoglycemia. He was diabetic. No, low blood sugar. And so he went into coma. He lost consciousness. And so if nothing is done, the man could die. And this six year old girl was the only one with the father. Thank God for children that are smart. Thank God for children that have been taught to do what to do. They've been told what to do, so they did it. And so this lone voice of this child was the one that called 999. And then the uh, ambulance man who communicates to the little girl what to do. In fact, the little girl said, Daddy has run, has daddy taken the uh, medication today? He said, Daddy did not take the medication. You see? And so you see the effect of it. And thank God for the fast thinking of that girl that knew what to do at that time. And the ambulance came. And the God saved that man from dying. May God give you children that will know what to do Amen. in the time of trouble. Consider others. David appreciated their help. He considered them. He gave them regards. The and so he could not drink that water. Do not take each other for granted. We need you. We need you. We need me. You see, can you just imagine you alone in this world? Just you alone. In the whole universe. Just you alone. No one to talk to. You see? Will you enjoy your wealth? Just you alone. I'm sure some people will say, yes, I will enjoy it. But you will keep eating and eating and eating and drinking and drinking and eating. You will get tired. You get bored. And so we have people that are bored. Christianity needs not to be bored. If you live your life right, if you direct or redirect your willpower to consider others, you don't need to be bought. Christians that are bought in the United Kingdom, they are lazy Christians. Lazy because they know what to do, but they don't want to do it. You see? Jesus Christ said, reach out. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So he wants us to reach out. Proper Christian reach out to others. Consider others. Value each other's company. It takes someone that is friendly to be friendly. 
You see, it takes someone that is friendly to have friends. Say, so he that has friends must himself be friendly. Unless you are friendly, you cannot have friends. The reason why you do not have friends is because you are not friendly. <coughs> friendly people have friends. Be a friendly Christian. Esther chapter 4, as I begin to round up. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. From verse 13, the Jews have problems. They wanted to wipe them out of the country in Persia. And so, Queen Esther, who happened to also be a Jew, was there in the palace. Mordecai, her uncle, was walking in the palace of the king. Amen. One of the big men of the country has issued in the alias with the king, they have written a decree to kill all the Jews. Now, if they are going to kill all the Jews, what about the Jew that is living in the king's palace? And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, verse 13. Do not think in your hearts that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent in this side, as 14, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. How will they feel when God knows that you are there and God needed help and God abandoned you and looked for help somewhere? How will you feel if someone that is close to you needed assistance. He or she knows we are there, but rather look for help elsewhere. By the time God begins to look for help elsewhere, knowing that we are there, that means God has rejected us. May God not reject you. Amen. He says, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. Don't let God be looking for help at another place. Don't let God be looking for who will serve him from another place. Those children of Abraham say, we are children of Abraham. So you cannot tell us what to do. Just what I said. Don't you know that God can raise up children to prison from stones? Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, for you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knows whether God has brought you to this church for such a time as this. Who knows whether God has brought you to that country for such a time as this. That is, God deliberately brought you there to solve their problem. God deliberately brought you there at such a time as this so that you can bring light into their darkness. Many a times when there is problem, we are quick to want to leave, up, leave the place. No. Who knows whether God has brought you for such a time as this? Esther did not know. But the guy has to remind Esther who knows if you say you are not going to help us and speak to the king, if you say you are not going to consider others, who knows that God has brought you, whether God has brought you for such a time as this? Consider others. When there is problem, it's not the time to leave the church. When there is problem, it's not the time to leave that environment. When there is problem, it's not the time to stop talking to that person. In fact, when there is problem, that is when your faith will rise up. When there is problem, that is when what you know about God should come to the limelight. People that know about God, they cannot hide their light. 
Darkness cannot hide them. So please, consider others. Who knows? Whether God brought you to this place at such a time like this. Consider others. Look at verse 15. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. You say, I'm not going to talk to that person again. Consider what God is saying. Esther replied them and said, verse 16, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shusha. That's in Pasha. And fast for me. When was the last time you heard about somebody's problem and you want to fast for them? You see? It's only when you consider others that when you hear somebody's problem, what they are going through, the Spirit of God will wake you up within you and say, why don't you fast for them? Why don't you pray for them? Why don't you visit them? This is the true test of Christianity. Christianity is not about bearing Christian name. I hope you know. Christianity is not about getting baptismal certificate. I hope you know. Christianity is not about church membership. I hope you know. Christianity is about the life of Christ. I know at times we fall below standard. But do you know the person that fell today can rise tomorrow? If you help them. Consider others. Said, go gather all the Jews and fast for them. Consider others. Pray for the backsliding Christians. Consider those that have not been coming to church. Maybe they need help. If you have a car, you can take them. Maybe they need help. There's a place for their children. You can help them. Maybe they need help. Your children have gone through the same class that their own children are going through. So your children can help them in their mathematics, in their English. Maybe they need help. Maybe they don't have money. Maybe they need help. They need a complaint. If you don't consider them, God will not put their thoughts into your heart. This is the true test of Christianity. Say, so whatever you do for the list of these ones, you have done it for me. How does it make you feel to do something for God? It's only when you think less of yourself. And you start thinking of other people that God will not put their thoughts into you. And guess what? That is the same way that God will bless you. This is the will of God concerning us, concerning you. That is why it says, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Because this is the will of God for you. Love does not rejoice in evil, does it? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the last but one scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love scripture. This is the only place in the Bible that gives you the dossier of love, that describes what love is and what love is not. So if your love tank, as falling low. If you find it difficult to love, please read this 1 Corinthians 13. It's the solution to lovelessness. Verse 4. Love suffers long, that is, love endures and is kind. Love does not envy. It's only a loveless Christian 
that will not want to hear the testimony of a good job that God did for another brother or another sister. It's only a loveless, somebody that doesn't have love, that will hear somebody's testimony and then will look away. It's only somebody that doesn't have love that will not rejoice when God is doing something good for somebody. Love does not help me. Love does not parade itself. That is, love does not show up. Just because God did it for you and God has not done it for another person, it doesn't make you a more, a better Christian than the other. You see? Thank God for you. Thank God for their lives. Rejoice. What did I say? Rejoice. Say, so love does not puff up. It doesn't show up. You see? It doesn't mean that it doesn't testify. Testifying in the church doesn't mean you are showing up. Because when you testify in the church, it means that God will use your testimony to encourage somebody. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the heart was right. I'm not testifying because I want to show up. I'm testifying because I want to declare what God has have done so that God can use my testimony to help others. Do I get an Amen. Love does not behave rudely. You see? Does not seek his own. Can you see? Unselfishness. Love is not provoked. See? Easily provoked. Love does not think evil of others. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. That is, something bad has happened to one of us. We don't rejoice because of that. You go there to encourage them. Don't say, uh huh. Did I tell you? You cost it. Love does not judge people, does not condemn people. Even if the brother cost it or sister cost it, who are you to say that? Who will know what will happen to you next time yourself? You don't know. See? Love does not rejoice in equity, but rejoices in the truth. Whatever is the truth, rejoice. Whatever God is doing for them, rejoice in it. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. Love never fails. Love never fails. And lastly, it says in Proverbs 18, verse 24, He that has a friend must himself be friendly. He that has a friend must himself be friendly. We all want to have friends. We all want to have company of people. Christianity is about people. Following Christ is about people. If it's not about people, why would Jesus Christ look for people? So I want you to know this God, that God is interested in people. Consider others. When you start considering other people in your affairs, you find out that People will be there for you when you need them. Let us pray. You are here this afternoon. You are not friendly. You are not friendly, and so you do not have friends. You are here this afternoon. You do not see anything to thank God for in your life. Because when you look all around you, it's all negative things. For God says, give thanks, because it is in your thanksgiving that God will arise on your behalf. By your giving of thanks, other people will hear of your testimony. And then they will thank God for your life as well. By your giving of thanks, you make God to do, to go an extra mile for you, even in your situation. You are here this afternoon. You don't see any reason why you should give thanks to God because you don't know Him. Your heart has been opened this morning by the Word of God. God is there with you. Why don't you ask Him to come into your heart? That if love never fails, I want God to come into my heart because God Himself is love. 
Why don't you open up yourself to God? The word of God has opened your heart right now. Ask him, invite him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. You want to hear more of it. Why don't I do what Christians do? Why don't I live like other Christians? Why am I not going out to reach other people's needs, to meet other people's needs? Why am I considering only myself? Why don't I fast for people? Why don't I pray for people? Why don't I look out for people? Why is it that in one week, two weeks, one month, I don't even care who comes to church or who doesn't come? Why is that I'm not concerned about the church number increasing? Who knows whether God has brought you here for such a time like this? Who knows that with you, God can bring other people through you to the church? Why don't you ask God to open your hearts and open your heart so that you can be there for Him? Ask Him. Thank you. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your messengers. Thank you for your word that has come to set us free. Thank you for sending us the word at such a time like this. We need you, God. In every area of our lives where we are falling out of favor with you, Lord, give us another chance. In every area of our lives, we are God, we are without friends. We are without friends because we ourselves are not friendly. Lord, make us friendly. Amen. Make us friendly for a purpose. Amen. Make us friendly so that we can have friends. Amen. So that we can bring other people to church. Amen. Lord, if we are that person that doesn't care about others, Lord, we know that it's the missing link in our lives. Something is missing. And that missing link is the fact that I have not yet known God. Therefore, Lord, I pray. Reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. Lord, as you reveal yourself to me, I will make other people to know you. Help, you. Help us, O God. And let your power continue to dwell with us. As a church, O God, we pray. Whatever the enemy has done, to scatter the church. In the name of Jesus, let that agent of destruction be itself scattered. Amen. So now on the Lord, what the enemy has meant for evil, we turn it around, we made it for good. Amen. Let every evil begin to work for our good. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.